The top for this mountain stage is what I was requested to bend the bows for, and this is the pattern and measurements that I was sent. To the right are pictures of an original coach still on display. So the first thing I needed to do was make the form that I could bend the bows around. Now this is just some scrap 2x6 material that I had around. It doesn't have to be very fancy. And you see here the inside radius needs to be 7 and 3 quarters of an inch. So I took a piece of plywood and I made a pattern that I could pattern off of for the end of these 2x6s. Now these bows need to be 55 and 3 quarter outside so I'm going to undersize this to accommodate the thickness of the bow itself and to allow for spring back when I actually bend these bows. Now these 2x6s aren't quite wide enough as they stand by themselves, so I'm going to add a little piece to each end for additional depth in the radius. These forms don't have to be pretty, they just have to be structurally strong enough to withstand the pressure when the wood is being bent. In the center I'm going to add a steel post that I use to adapt this form to my bending press. So when I built my press I designed it to accept a variety of forms and this is just one of the styles that I use on this press. Now if you watched my video on steam bending sheep wagon bows this is the band that I used when I bent those bows. Underneath this band I have some pipes welded at different positions. I'm going to bring my cable ends in to a closer position and attempt to use this band when I first bend my set of bows. We're going to find out eventually in this video why this was not the best idea. Now the plans called for one inch thick ash, inch and three quarter inch wide to make these bows. So I selected the lumber I wanted to use and went ahead and milled it to size. Now the order was for 15 bows. So I needed to go through and decide which ones were actually bendable. The rule of thumb is less than one inch of run out per foot in the grain. This piece you can see here is way sharper than that, so I'm actually going to take and reject this one, set it aside. But most of these you can see the grain run out is about right at a foot, so I'm going to consider these bendable. Then I'm going to use a quarter inch round over bit and just take off the sharp corners. The boiler that I use for steaming is coal fired and it has about a 20 to 25 gallon capacity. I take general household ammonia, non-sudsing, and I'll add about two cups to the, the boiler itself. This will add to the penetration of the steam when they are in the steam tank. When I begin to show signs of steam, I'm going to load up three and bend three at a time. As this begins to build pressure, you can see some suds starting to come out around the, the door. 
I'm going to go ahead and put a center mark on my form so I know where to line up my banding. Then from my notch that shows the center on this band, I'm going to measure back three and a half feet because the boards I'm going to bend initially are seven feet. So at these marks, I'm going to clamp boards on the band to act as stops. And remember when we're bending wood, everything has to be compression. So I don't want these uh, bows when they come out of the steamer to be able to stretch, but I want to keep them contained so that all the bending goes into compression. This board on the right, I'm going to clamp down fairly securely. Then I'm going to take one of the extra pieces as a yardstick, so to speak. I'm going to put it in to show me about where the location of my board on the left needs to be. This one I'm not going to clamp securely until I actually put the, the bows in getting ready to be bent. Now I always bend under pressure which helps force the steam and the moisture in. And since this material is kiln dried ash, one inch thick, I've allowed it to cook for two hours. Now I'm ready to go ahead and get them bent. The block on the left is not yet clamped securely, so I'm going to go ahead and tap it into place so it butts up against my bows. So now you can see where I have five clamps on each end of these bows. So while this is bending, I've got the camera moving around, so I'm a little jumpy, so I apologize for the, the quick movements. The left side came up fairly straight, but the right side was a little behind, so I took the come along and brought it into position. So when I finished this bend, I adjusted both sides to where they were fairly straight up and down. And here it actually looks like they bent pretty well. To get these off the form, eventually I need to have some framework to contain them in, so I've quick built five sets. These bows have now set for a couple hours and cooled down, so I can take them off and put them into this uh, little framework that they're going to dry in. Now through this short little clip I've actually stopped it twice to let you see that the amount of spring back was about four inches overall, two inches on each end. Right here you can see it's standing up. I have to push it down about four inches. and here once again. So I could just end the video and show you this and say everything went really well and that's how you do it. The truth is that isn't so. I looked at these and there were a couple of bows that had these stretch marks on the outside of the band. So I went back to examine why. As I measured between my two blocks, I see the blocks had stretched out, been pushed out about an inch. So my five clamps were not sufficient to keep this wood contained. Also, my four inches of spring back needed to be accounted for. So I'm going to take my form off, knowing that I'm going to now overbend. I need to overbend about two inches, 
when I do that, I don't want this sharp corner to put a crease into the bow, so I'm going to take and round this corner off on both ends of my form. Another thing I'm going to change is the style of the band. I have some bands that I use when I bend two inch thick hardwood and they have welded ends on, on each end of a two by a quarter inch angle iron. I'm going to use these bands now to bend the next set of bows and these will not be allowed to stretch. Also, the pulleys on my press that change the direction of the cables, I'm going to drop that down so that my direction of inward pull is lowered. I also keep some 1 8 inch banding handy as quick shims to accommodate for any uh, variation in length. So if my wood is a little short, I'm going to put whatever I need in to shim it out to keep it as tight as possible against these ends. So now we're going to try this once again. Again, if you've watched my other steam bending video, you know that this press runs at 1800 to 1 reduction, so it moves fairly slowly. So as the ends of these bows start to get close to vertical, my cables are pulling more upward than inward. So I'm actually going to stop it and I'll use some come-alongs to have a direct end pull. I'm going to put a come-along on each side and actually bring these in to overbend them to compensate for the spring back.
Now you can see I have them over bent, but I'm going to take a carpenter square and actually adjust these so I have two inches on both sides over bent. This should allow for the two inches of spring back that's, that's going to occur. The right side initially I had three inches, the left side was not quite two inches, so I made a couple of adjustments to where we had two inches on each side. So as the finished bend, this is what I ended up with. After these have set for at least two hours, I'm going to take these off and put them into the framework. We'll look at them closely and see if they're going to work. Now if you look at the top, of these bows, you can see that they actually kind of recurved backwards a little bit. We're going to address that in a minute. So now they go into the framework with hardly any downward pressure at all. They turned out really well. These no longer showed any sign of any stretch marks. Having the solid ends made all the difference. Now this is the recurve on the end of the bows. Since there's still moisture in these, I can take them and actually put them in a vise and straighten this back out by causing the, the inward uh, fibers to stretch back out. This wood is still fairly elastic and pliable at this stage. So this is our finished product. These actually had some pretty nice straight grain. No buckling on the inside, no stretching on the outside. We have our 55 and 3 quarter inch OD that our pattern called for. We are one inch thick and inch and three quarters wide. Bending three at a time, we have almost five and a half inches of width that we bent at one time. Here we have a second set of bows, and we finally ended up with all five. So we had our 15 bows. I had three that I had rejected because the runout was worse than the one inch and 12 inches. 
There was some wavy grain and these were not ideal. So just for demonstration purposes, I put these three in the steamer and put them through the same process as I did all the rest. Just to show that you don't always have to have perfect ideal lumber. If you have the correct banding and that they are contained properly, even less than ideal kiln dried hardwood lumber will bend. This run out was in about five inches. And even the wavy grain bent. There was no stretching on the outside and these actually were usable bows. I didn't include these bows in the order of the 15, I just bent these for example purposes. So these are our 15 bows. Thanks for watching.